Hello everybody and welcome to my video Getting Tidier. I hope you had a fantastic Easter and today's been the bank holiday as well. I don't know whether you have bank holidays on the Monday. Uh, so we've had a bank holiday Friday, we've had a bank holiday on the Monday and then of course we have the weekend off. Um, so in this video you're going to see a few um, videos and photographs from Easter that I wanted to share with you and then I'm going to go through and let you know what I've been up to. So first of all I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. I've now got 1,937 subscribers and as you know when I get to 2,000 there's going to be a big giveaway. Uh, also a little bit of information on top views so 44% United Kingdom Got Canada now up there with 3.7% and Australia at 3% and then Italy, perhaps one person out there with 0.5%. So it's a bit of a mix today. Uh, so I've done some work outside. I've done the washing. I've sorted out some work in the hot tub and swept and cleaned all around the hot tub. But first of all, we should really talk about Easter Sunday. So we got up, went to church. Um, enjoyed the service with Canon J. John, who uh, speaks internationally, if any of you are interested. We then did the Easter egg hunt at our house and then went to my mum's for traditional roast lamb. And here are the pictures of the cakes that I told you about that I said were absolutely delicious. It's become a bit of a tradition, so that every year now we have Simnel cake and then my mum's partner makes the Easter nests, which are delicious. I don't know what the recipe is but they're far nicer than any other Easter nests that I've ever had. So then on to today, uh, when we went to Felbrick Hall, which is in Norfolk. Um, if you've not been to Norfolk, uh, there's some absolutely amazing places. I highly recommend it. This is Felbrick Hall and it's stunning. I did that video because they're beautiful paintings of Venice when one of the owners came back from a grand tour. The staircases are wide and elaborate and quite incredible. And can you believe that this house went to rack and ruin because the person spent so much money, lost so much money. Uh, eventually it went to a different family member and they invested and brought it back to um, the, its full glory and wonderful, situa wonderful position really. Uh, there are so many books in the library that they had to block up one of the windows in order to put more bookcases. did make me think a little bit of me. So that's one option, isn't it? I could always block up one of the windows in order to get some of my books in. Um, also, if you see on the video, there's a tiny little cabinet and there are the books for the servants. So every all the people in the house get access to the full library and the servants have a tiny little bookcase. This room is quite incredible, hand-painted Chinese wallpaper, uh, quite stunning and incredible condition for its age, really, really is. Um, this, really walking around the house and the gardens are spectacular. Uh, these houses are really throughout the whole of the United Kingdom. There are these sort of places to visit. We're very lucky that we've got the National Trust that look after these places, preserve them, protect them and uh, restore them. So we're very lucky in that. So we decided to have lunch um, in our, we had lunch first of all, so we took lunch with us, had lunch in the car, like a little picnic in the car. And then we went round the house. And then after we looked round the house, we went round the gardens and my husband, uh, my husband and I and my daughter went round and did the hunt. My daughter had to do various things in order to get the Easter egg at the ends. You can see how lovely the gardens are. They've got a dove cot um, and also they've got chickens, which we really enjoyed uh, seeing. Um, the female chicken looked like she'd got a nest of chickens and the cockle was looking out for her. So I'm sure that they're probably um, going to be chicks in a week or so. I love this bit near the dovecote. I've been many times and it's uh, got full of all different herbs, this section here. So I've always really enjoyed going around that because I do like my herbs. They have about 10 different versions of mint, which I really like. So the plan was that we'd spend a few hours here 
and then we'll go home I uh, pop to the supermarket because we needed to get, get a few bits um, my daughter really wanted sushi as a treat so we needed to get some sushi and then also I needed to do some bits in the garden so I'd set the washing machine before we went so I knew the washing would all be ready to hang out and it really got lovely and sunny while we were out so I thought that's perfect to get that on the line whilst my husband and daughter just popped to the supermarket to get this sushi and some other bits and pieces and then I knew I really wanted to start cleaning out around the hot tub because it's not going to be long before we'll drain all the water and replace it although we do need to get it tiled first and then I thought that I'd do a bit of work in the greenhouse um, and then come in and do a bit of tidying towards the end of the day so it is bank holiday, um, but you know, the, obviously jobs don't stop, do they? There's still things that need to be done, and I love being out in the garden, uh, so that was really nice. And I also knew that I needed to do some work on this camp license. Do you know? I really regret saying that I was going to do it. Uh, the camp is getting closer and closer. None of it is complicated. None of it is requires too much brain power, but it's the amount that's involved. I mean, obviously, it's, uh, you know, you're taking other people's children away, so you've got to do full risk assessments and plan everything, etc., etc. Um, but there's just so much involved. And then you can see I'm back home. You can see the sun shining down. Put the line out. Someone did say to me yesterday, why do you keep walking backwards and forwards? Why don't you just get everything from the, uh, the washing basket? That did make me laugh. I've got three washing baskets and they're all, all full of clothes that need to be put away. Um, so, yeah, very good point. As a reminder that I do need to put the clothes away. So I decided to get all of them on the line and uh, knew that they'd be all dry by the end of the day, which is really good. And what I wanted to now do is take the opportunity to uh, let you know a few of the comments that, have, um, that I've had through. Uh, so I said about, um, you know, to, to Linda about the fact that my washing baskets were full. And she said that I'm not, she's not, I'm not the only one. She's got lots of uh, laundry that needs to be put away. Um, Bluebird said about or oh, watching me hang the laundry out reminded of when she was small and she'd be playing in the grass and her mum would be hanging the laundry nearby. It's funny how these sort of different things prompt different mem memories. Uh, Pam was saying to me about how she did a big sort out and managed to throw out lots of seed packets that were open and she cleaned all her greenhouse with Jay's fluid and that's exactly what my husband's going to be doing for me tomorrow which will be really good. Um, Judith talked about the garden and said it's very hard to grow flowers in Texas because the sun and the heat just kill them. I'm guessing they have lots of cacti there. Um, but she said she loved the scenery and it was really nice to hear a couple of you have visited England. Um, one, of the, one of my followers said that they'd been to London, Oxford, Stonehenge, quite a range. A Stonehenge is absolutely amazing. One of my f best places in the whole of England. And then my conversation about sort of hoarding and getting rid of things sparked a few conversations about how where people have regretted getting rid of things. And I think probably the biggest thing that I get I'm, I regret getting rid of, my daughter was probably about two, and my mum was going to like a charity event uh, near where our partner lives, and they were looking for soft toys. So I decided to go all the way through these soft clothes toys and be really ruthless and got rid of one which was this little dog that I'd had for quite a few years um, uh, but it was like kind of in a bag you know in a cupboard and I just decided to get rid of it now this little dog my husband had brought back for me when I think we were still dating and um, he brought it back from Canada when he was in the Royal Air Force so all the toys went. I didn't think a single thing more about them until a few months later, my mum saw this little boy with my dog. Now, my mum was obviously being kind to me and saying, oh, like the fact that I'd given these toys away had brought so much enjoyment and so much pleasure to these little children and had seen this little boy going around at the town with my dog. But instead of kind of making me feel like really pleased, 
it just reminded me of the dog. Well, I'd completely forgotten about it and didn't, couldn't even remember what it looked like. But it reminded me of the dog. And then I started regretting the fact that, oh, my husband had brought that back for me to have the consideration to go and get me this cute little dog. And then I thought, oh, I could have given that to my daughter. So there's those sorts of things. When you have hoarding tendencies and you keep hold of things just in case and you keep hold of things because things have memories, when you then have an experience like that, I think it then makes you keep hold of even more. Um, yeah, that's kind of not a great experience. I mean, the other thing that I've also had um, is giving away clothes of my daughter's to other friends who've got younger children. Um, and once, you know, you give them away, great, they're gone, someone else can make use of them. A lot of the clothes that I've bought for her when she's been younger have been very good quality and they're advertised to, like, be, be last for four children. Um, so I'd given this bag away and then my friend, again, she thought she was being really kind. She sent photographs of her daughter wearing the dresses to me and I, I had at that point forgotten the dresses but then when she sent the photographs I started thinking oh I shouldn't have got rid of those dresses I shouldn't have got rid of those dresses so after that I just felt like what I needed to do was just give it to charity shop the charity shop where I would then never see the clothes again um so I, yeah I do think when you have that sort of thing you know happen it just makes you question uh, giving things away and letting things go. So there's a full line here of dark clothes. I've got another uh, dark load to do and a white load. Someone the other day said to me, why don't you do a, one load a day or half a load a day? Well, I wouldn't put the washing machine on for half a load because of the amount of water that it uses. Um, but I try not to, when the weather's not nice, the, the problem is I don't want washing hanging around the house uh, every day of the week so I try to do it say two days um, and then try to get rid of it don't always put it away as you know but I try to get rid of it put it upstairs ready to be put away so that's why and um, I do have the dryer setting on my washing machine but it's not very powerful so after I put the washing out you can see it's a bit cloudy um, but it's still bright I then decided to sort round all these things around the hot tub so it's ended up being a bit of a dumping ground for various different things, not all of which are related to the hot tub. So there are quite a few old towels and cloths that are used for the car and different things. Um, one that needs to be bins, uh, some others that need to be put in the washing machine. Then there were a couple of bu buckets which are used to wash the car and some car cleaner. There was an old cardboard box which I'm not sure where we were keeping. Um, a couple of containers for cleaners, um, my daughter's noodle for the water, but I don't think she'll need that in the hot tub anymore because she's getting more and more confident in the water and putting her face under the water, which is good. And then there was also lots of bath toys that we'd had out in the hot tub, which she'd enjoyed, but now need to either go to the charity shop or she needs to decide which ones she wants for the bath after they've been cleaned, of course. So what I said to my husband, this area around the hot tub needs to just have the hot tub, the barbecue to one side and our umbrella. We don't need any other bits and pieces. And what we're going to do is you can see what I'm walking on there. It's all been paved. My husband did all of that last year. He's done a fantastic job. Um, but what we want to do is we want to tile the whole section that's under the hot tub area. So we're going to tile all of that. So we need to remove the hot tub completely, obviously drain the water, move the hot tub out. We're going to get it all tiled underneath. Now my husband does have a good go at tiling. He's pretty good at that. I mean, he'll have a go at anything, to be honest, and it's and pretty good. Um, but we are going to get that tiled by somebody that does DIY jobs for us every so often. So he'll tile that, and then my husband will put the hot tub back and we'll fill that in fill it up with water and then it'll be ready to go for the spring and summer. Um, I don't use, I, last year I didn't use a hot tub at all. My husband tends to use it if he has like, does a workout on his bike. Um, 
I did find it relaxing when we first got it, but then what happened was my daughter absolutely loves it and then she'll get in and splash around and it doesn't become a very relaxing experience, if I'm honest. So all these, these chairs are chairs that my dad gave me because he's got so much stuff. So he gave me these chairs and they do come in really handy for when we have people around for birthdays. But obviously they don't belong propped up by the hot tub. So I decided to take all of them um, down to the shed, which I did say to my husband, please don't be unhappy at the fact that I've just put them in the entrance of the shed because at the moment you can't really get in the shed. Um, that needs a good sort out. So all this water is rainwater and has gone green. Uh, so obviously before we can drain the hot tub, we can't take the lid off because it's filled with rainwater. So I drain all that down and then we'll be able to take the lid off and then start draining the main water. Incredibly, I expected that water, because obviously we should have really done this like in November and just didn't get round to it. But I expected the water in the hot tub to be like in a really bad way. But incredibly, it's quite clear. It's got a couple of leaves in it, but otherwise it's all really clear. And then where I'm pouring it is where my husband put a drain into the patio. As I said, he did a great job of that. And then can you see the fence? So that fence is actually in our garden. At the bound, the, my neighbour is actually responsible for that boundary, but she insisted that the old lady who lived here, that the old lady paid for the, for the fence, and then insisted that the old lady had it in, put in her garden, which I can't work out how this has ever happened. So the whole of the fence is not on the boundary line, it's in our garden. And the reason why it looks so awful was because my neighbour decided she got in a bit of a state about she doesn't like tree the, some of the trees in our garden. So she got a bit upset with us because we like the trees and we're not planning to have the trees cut down. And then in her upset, she went round the whole of our garden painting everything pink. So the house is pink, the water butt is pink and all the fence panels have been painted pink and all the pink dripped in onto our side. So if you bear in mind that she shouldn't even be painting that fence because it is literally in our garden, not on the boundary line. Um, so I decided to think, well, can I somehow make this look a bit better? Because I'd got all this pink just dripping down the fence. So I then painted it white and obviously now it's all worn off and looks dreadful. But those fence panels, are in a bad way they all need to be replaced so we are planning to put three new fence panels in which will be brown although I'm a bit worried that she may then decide that she wants to paint them pink on her side which you can't actually do because it's like leaning over into someone else's garden and like pulling plants up you know it's someone else's property so she can't paint it but we'll see what happens my old neighbour, who used to live opposite, who sadly passed away, he'd always say, you never win an argument with a neighbour. And that's so true. Uh, we've been very lucky with neighbours, um, but just one of our neighbours can be a little um, up and down, should we say. So I cleared all the water out of that, and then I took all the items down to the shed. Uh, so now it looks so much clearer I'm really pleased I managed to get this done in quite a quick amount of time. So I'd probably got to half this point and my husband and daughter then came back from the supermarket and I'd nearly done. So that I'd be, it's a good job done really because I do look out of my window, both the kitchen window and windows upstairs and you look down and you just see a muddle. And I don't mind having it muddled in my working area, you know, the area at the end of my garden behind all the... Um, the, the archway and everything. I don't mind that because that is a working area with lots of pots and I grow things etc etc. Um, but I don't want all this area to have loads of things that need to be sorted out and are untidy. I just want to be able to sit out on my patio and just enjoy the sunshine and just relaxing. And then as well as my camp license and just getting sent the finishing off the final documents and getting them sent to various people. 
Um, I then wanted to finish my work with my learners, just finish off bits and pieces. So just checking uh, meeting dates, confirming um, documentation that's required for their endpoint assessments and just checking assignments. So I've got all of that done this evening. So I've got no more to do now until I come back from my holiday. And then for my f number one job, I just need to send an email to say, just a reminder, I'm going on holiday and who's looking after various pieces of work. Um, and just do a little bit more. I am working tomorrow evening for that job. So I do 18 and a half hours for that job. And I've booked off Thursday and Friday. Uh, but in the holidays, I'll often work Tuesday evening. So I'm just doing a couple of hours. So I'll just be able to finish everything off and then I'll be done. Um, this lovely little wheelbarrow is so, so sweet. We are given this by our lovely neighbour. Um, but I did think that I could have the handle fixed. Um, but sadly, when you look at the rest of it, it's all, um, all rusty. don't think it can be saved. So I asked my daughter, was she happy me putting it in the bin? And she was. So sadly, that has gone. And then now I'm putting all the things in the shed. So marching backwards and forwards down the garden, grabbing things, putting them all away. Um, I can't say that I'm putting them all away properly because none of them have homes. Uh, the tools have all collapsed in the shed. There's still loads of chicken things in the shed that need to be sorted out and cleared up. And there's various other things that need to be put away. Uh, but at least I did quite a lot there. Just, just want to clear around the hot tub so stuff doesn't once went wasn't sitting there. I also decided to be quite ruthless with some other things. I like that word, ruthless. So there's an old drawer that I'd picked up at the side of someone else's house that they were giving away, and for some reason I decided to keep it. I think I was going to put some plants and stuff in it. I've not done a single thing with it, so I think I'll put it outside my garden, and then somebody else can take it if they want it otherwise it can go in the bin. There were some broken plant pots and cracked plant plots that needed to be put out. Um, my daughter decided to come out and do some gardening, which was nice. Uh, she's joined Gardening Society next year, she was telling me. Um, so I guess she wants to do some practice. You can see me just in the archway, can't you, putting the things in the shed. I'm going to be getting um, a contraption for my camera which is going to make, make videoing much, much better for me and for you. So you'll get things at better angles and you'll hopefully be able to see things a bit better. Um, and I won't have to keep putting my phone on the floor and propping my phone up and then the wind blows and the phone falls on the floor or falls flat down so then I have to do loads of editing. So that'll be good. And then the rest of the video, right at the very end, if you stay that long, I wanted to show you the Easter egg that I got. So it was advertised on or talked about on a programme with Maddie Moat. And my husband and daughter got it for me. And it's really lovely. And inside there's a little turtle and a little starfish. So I hope you've had a lovely weekend. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you've got any Easter eggs, what you did over Easter. Um, and your thoughts about anything that I've discussed. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!